Hello, welcome to The Loney Show. I'm your host, John Maloney. And in this episode, I brought on a new regular, Carl Meister. And as for our Hello. guest... And as for our guest, he's from California. He's, he's retired from the military and law enforcement and has now gained tons of experience on crypto. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Antonio Ladson. Hey, how's it going there? Nice to be on the right. show. Yeah. yeah. So, how's life? Uh, life's pretty pretty good. You know, uh, since we're talking about crypto, life, life is very uh, eye-opening right now with the volatility, with all the events going on in the world. So, so crypto is something to stand up and look at right now. It's really amazing to be in a crypto yeah. environment right now. The space is awesome. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, have you been up to much recently in terms of crypto? Well, well, you know what? I started my process probably about three years ago, but I really got into it about a year and a half ago. Uh, one day, my, my cousin called me from New York, and he, he really got me involved in Forex. You know, Forex is a pretty good process where you really don't – own nothing you're just turning trading currency against currency uh, so as i was doing that you know you would buy crypto you would buy bitcoin to send it to your your broker account and i didn't really understand what bitcoin was but i was just doing that and then i started looking at what bitcoin really was and it kind of led me down the rabbit hole to understanding what crypto is so i really got into crypto and understanding utilities uh what it is and you know, that space itself, not just a digital asset, but it's a technology wrapped all together. So I felt that really fascinating. And I, that led my journey. And I just, you know, from there, I just let it fly. You know, there's so many different aspects about crypto itself. You know, we, okay. that average person here, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. But, but when you really take a deep dive into it, Bitcoin is a, is a digital asset with a similarity to gold. But if you look at other platforms like Ethereum, that platform offers so much more than just being a, a digital asset. I mean, the platforms itself offer different technologies that you can build on. And you look at ADA, where we talk about the block itself, where, where information is, is, is power and all that information is, is put together and, and keep in an open source and decentralized is just, it leads into other avenues. You know, I just think I was fascinated to understand what crypto was. You know, my thing is I missed the boat when uh, the internet came out. And now that crypto is coming out to include the metaverse and Web3, it's an exciting time. I think we're, we're at the tip of the spear of this new digital age. And, you know, something to sit there and take notice of. So I, I'm just fascinated with crypto. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I'm just fascinated with. So with that, you know, I started a company, Black Crypto, which is B-L-A-Q-U-E, crypto. And, you know, I, I took that, that business and turned it into a learning platform. Uh, information in crypto is very vast. The average person really don't understand what it is. We talk about an industry that commands $2.1 trillion. Now that it went down this week, about $1.8 trillion is something you sit there and you take notice of. So if you ask the average person on the street, yeah, I've heard about, you know, Bitcoin. But if you ask the average person, are you into it? I don't think they understand the process of how to get into it and how to do a deep dive research into it. So I kind of took that reins and, and trying to bring that, that space up to helping others understand what it is, you know, so... I was sitting there with my granddaughter one day, and she was asking me about it, you know. Uh, and I was explaining her at a basic level, and I took that conversation we had, and I wrote a book. But, you know, it's called Brandy and Jacob Crypto Adventure. And it kind of geared toward the age of 9 and 13, 9 and 13-year-olds. And, and it tells the story of crypto at the basic level. You know, it, it takes them down that journey of what is crypto, what is a blockchain? You know, uh, is a similarity to the stock market? You know, uh, you know, she liked it. It was just a, a fun book, you know, to the point where a couple of my adult friends read it. And, you know, it's like a light bulb coming on. Oh, that's what crypto is. You know, it is not it's not as not as uh, extensive as people think it is. So that's pretty much what I've been doing with it. 
I just think it's so, an amazing space to be in. Great. I might say you want to tell. I might say you want to ask us. Is there a difference between Bitcoin and crypto, or is it like the same? So, so crypto is the platform. Bitcoin is one of the one base itself. Uh, I think when people think hear the word Bitcoin, they think Bitcoin is crypto, but it's the other way around. Uh, Bitcoin was probably one of the leaders way back to 2000. You know, we can go down way down to 2008 to 2011, 2013, where it was first initialized. And, you know, it was formed to give you an option to get away from fiat currency. And when I say fiat currency, I, I look at like the dollar, the peso, the Deutsch, well, the euro. You get away from that and you kind of can make yourself your own bank. You know, we look at banks today. So, so is it a pushback from governments when we start talking about the centralized of, of course we do. So the combat they plan, they come up with a CBDC, central bank digital currency. You know, and I think when people hear that, they really don't understand what that really says. Central bank digital currency. The key word in that whole acronym right there is central. So it's centralized again, where the government really controls your money. So if you take a decentralized asset in crypto itself, can you be your own bank? Of course you can. You know, you you buy from an exchange and then there's things called wallets that you can put it in and you you put a pass on it. You put 12 keys on it. You lock it up. You're your own bank. You know, even though there's a volatility in the market itself goes up or down, your money stays with you. And, you know, and, you know, you look at it right now where where we have the incident going on in Ukraine. So when war happens, what, what goes first? The economy goes first. The banking system goes first. So when the when that invasion started, the ruble and the Ukrainian money started going down. So what do they do? They go to these exchanges and they go buy Bitcoin. They buy cryptocurrency. And they take it anywhere you want to go with, you know. So it kind of gives the world a lesson on a digital asset and how you can safeguard it to yourself. If I had $10,000 in the bank and I'm a Ukrainian and that happens, the bank structure kind of falls. I, I may lose my money. But if I got $10,000 in crypto, no matter where I go, my money stays with me. You know, you kind of see how you become your own bank kind of helps you out. Hmm. So, yeah. so, with, so with that, you, you, you have to have regulations. And I think regulations are coming pretty, pretty quick. The EU is looking at regulation for crypto. America is looking at regulation, Canada. But, you know, I welcome regulation. I welcome paying taxes because when you regulate something, you have legal tender. And legalizing a digital asset is, is a great response for people in the space itself. So it, 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 so many places you can go with crypto. You know, I just get excited about it. Hmm. Great. And what do you like about working revolving around cryptocurrency? Uh, you know, I think I like the, the, the possible access, what it does and what it can do. What kind of future can we have with crypto? You look at the, the person who helped to devise Ethereum, Charles, Charles Hopkins. He broke away from them and he came up with a coin called ADA, you know, a different blockchain technology. And he really utilized that in Africa to help with their schooling system. Uh, when you start talking about blockchain in the as digital asset itself, what does it do? What, what is utility to that asset? So that utility can do anything from record keeping, uh, provide ledgers, uh, keep contracts, support NFT, non-fungible tokens. It is so much technology wrapped into those digital assets that you know, that's going to help the world itself just progress. So when you go to a country like Africa and, and, and help them with their record keeping using a blockchain technology, you, it leaps and bounds for that country and it helps them out, not only with the record keeping, but identification process. It is so, so many applications that you can utilize. If you take a country like El Salvador and they take their money and buy crypto. And as the volatility is there, but as the asset grows, their country become more 
independent from going from having to go to the central bank and borrow money. You know, I think that the centralized mm-hmm. the centralized process of it is just a great thing to have. So that's that what that's what excites me about crypto itself. You know, it's just a wonderful space. There's so much to it that we could have. You know, I can sit here and talk about it all day. Now you talk about the metaverse. Uh, the metaverse comes in, you know, it's, it's just a game changer. So when you start talking about metaverse, you, you know, our kids play Roblox. Our kids play, you know, my, I look at Atari when I'm talking real way back, uh, PS4, PS5. So you can get a group of people with headphones or, or VRs, goggles, and they can meet in a centralized place. Say if an artist want to have a concert in the metaverse and he's selling tickets, you're, you're watching this concert live from your house and you're kind of interacting with everybody around you in the metaverse or you buy land in the metaverse. And people always ask the question, you know, why should I buy land in the metaverse? Understanding what the metaverse will evolve to, you can understand why. So you buy property in the metaverse and say 10 blocks down the road, you have a Gucci store, you have Prada. Uh, the other way, you have McDonald's, you got Nikes. You know, those, those, those people are advertising in the inner world because the connectivity is more. You guys in the UK, I'm in California. I'll meet you in the metaverse. Let's go watch a concert together. Live concert together. You know, let's interact together. Let's have lunch together in the metaverse. I mean, it, it's amazing what you can do. Say if you go to the metaverse, say, uh, McDonald's, jump in the metaverse. Say you're in the metaverse, so you're, you're, you're around, playing around. And you want to order lunch. You order from there and Uber or DoorDash brings it to your house. I mean, there's so many things. And it's so exciting, you know, that we can go into when we start talking about crypto, NFTs, metaverse, blockchain technology. You know, it's just, it's just a good platform to understand and be in right now. So that's why I kind of jumped into this, you know, and this in writing the kids book kind of teach our kids, you know, what's coming down the road. You know, we see uh, internet right now, how it acts, and nobody really wanted to jump on the internet when it came out. Now we we talk about Web3, more interactive, more products, more uh, record keeping, you know, you kind of put your presence on that also in a different way than the internet. So it's just exciting to see all this stuff being built right now. So that's why that's why I have that passion for that space itself. You know, and it's the more the more people understand it and get on board, you know, the more they can understand, you know, how it could help them out. You know, we see uh, we start talking about who gets these assets. You have your retail investor, you have your institutional investor. The retail investor is going to be a guy like me or you. We don't have those billions of dollars to jump to this, this, right? So we kind of buy crypto as we hear it because we don't really understand it. The institutional investor, big companies, Nike, Puma, you know, Microsoft, Tesla, these guys see crypto and metaverses as, as something they can put their money in, utilize the technology, and also build on it. So when you see institutional investors taking notice to this space, you have, you have to sit up and notice, wow, if these guys are dumping hundreds of millions of dollars into this asset. You know, I got to get in it, too. I got to understand what's going on. I need to see what the metaverse is. What's this blockchain technology? What's Web3? I mean, I think Amazon, Disney, these guys are taking a big part in, to get into this space. So as a, re, a retail investor, you have to say, OK, if this much money is being dumped into this $1.8 trillion environment, why am I not in it? Why am I not learning about it? And, and right now we have a very small percentage globally that's into this. But each day, I think more people are getting involved, understanding, you know, this doing uh, UNICEF. You know, they just got into the space. You know, if you just look at technology itself, so many people, so many companies are getting into this space and utilizing this in so many different ways. You know, it's just amazing. You know, it, it excites me. I, mean, I could talk about this for like a couple hours. That's how exciting it is. Great. Fabulous. So I've heard you got your own online crypto academy. Um, what, yeah. what, is, what exactly in your academy do you teach people about crypto? 
so so we open it up and then we have to pull it back for a minute. So so by in Black Crypto Academy, we're looking at the basic user, anywhere from the basic to the mid level to the expert. A basic user. Uh, the question is, how do I buy crypto? You know, what is crypto? Where did it come from? Uh, how was it formed? You know, que we answer questions like that. We walk you through the process of, you know, what it, what is an exchange? How do you get your fiat currency to an exchange and buy a crypto asset? We walk you through that process. We walk you through the process of understanding what a blockchain is. We walk you through the process of understanding what the metaverse is. So we, we go from beginners to expert. Um, and we try to be interactive. You know, we try to have, you know, meetings to anyone who wants to join in irregularly. And we do QAs. I think when you get a person who gets into, gets into the space as a beginner and, and put their money, once you put your money into something, of course, you want to learn more. And then that's what gets you right there. So I think that's what we offer at the Black Crypto Academy. We give you a place to feel comfortable and understand at an entry level of how to get into this space. And then as you progress, we, you know, we go to the medium level, other things you can do. When I say medium level, I start talking about uh, farming, mining, staking, how do you stake your money? You know, and I'll take staking as a, a basic example right there. A bank gives you 0.1%. Anytime you deposit your money in the bank and hold it. But at the same time, if I'm another person, I want to borrow money from the bank, depending on what my credit score is, they're going to charge me accordingly with APR, anywhere from 4 to 11% just to borrow that money. But at the same time, I leave my money parked in there. They only give me 0.1% on it. At the same time, I have a digital asset, and you have to look at different exchanges to see what they offer. But I have a digital asset. Say I got $10,000. And on my exchange, they're offering me an opportunity to stake my money. So basically what they're telling me is if I let them utilize my digital asset, they're going to let me park it there, and they're going to give me a percentage higher than what you get from the bank. I think that's a conflict when you start talking about the central bank and banks looking at crypto said, oh, man, these guys don't know what they're doing. But at the same time, I think they're saying we, we can't compete with that. We can't compete with those returns that they're giving. So I think the banks, instead of competing, they're going to get into that game. So that's that's what Black Crypto kind of offer. It, it tells you the basic things you need to know to sustain yourself in this asset class. You know, you start from the beginning, you go to the middle, you go to expert, but it's different levels on this. I mean, I think there's there's guys out there who, who start these things up, and I don't think they really – look at it from a real basic eyes of saying, okay, what is crypto and how do I get in? You have to start there. I mean, you start at the lowest level. And I think Black Crypto Academy, we're, 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 we're adding on every day new things. And the crypto space evolves so fast. You constantly have to update the information that you're providing people so they can understand you can't put up a, a uh, academy and, and utilize information and just expect that information to stay current or real on an ongoing basis. It's constantly upgraded. Uh, new applications are constantly upgraded. Blockchain information is constantly upgraded. Uh, exchanges are constantly upgraded. The way you interact, stake your money is constantly upgraded. So I think Black Crypto Academy understand that. So we we're constantly trying to upgrade what we're teaching folks to make make folks want to come back and learn. So that's Black Crypto Academy in a nutshell. Interesting. Mm. I like it very well, indeed. Are you guys into crypto? Oh yes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not, moving into crypto. I am Basically not. level. Oh wow. You're not. I'm sorry, but I don't know much about crypto. Or hey, Black Crypto Academy. You know, uh, I think, uh, you know, I think right now, you know, if you, you know, I hate to see that word nerd, but if you're, you, right now, if you're standing at a party and there's 20 people in that party, you got one guy talking about crypto and that's all he's talking about. You probably have two guys that want to talk to him. Everybody else is probably going to look like, really, what is that? I'm not into it. I'm not really involved in that. 
but the three guys that are sitting there talking, they understand, you know, how big this thing is going to get. And they understand, I mean, look at the Super Bowl in America. You know, that's the big thing. You look at it, they're paying what? Was it seven million for 30 seconds? And then you have FTX, you have, uh, you got LeBron James giving you know, crypto ads. You know, at that level, you know, a guy like Tom Brady, Matt Damon, at that level, when they're throwing that kind of money into this space, you have to understand that it's going somewhere. You have to recognize that, you know, this is a space that's, you know, that you should get into. You know, to me, I call crypto itself a transfer of wealth. And when I say that, old money to new money. And when I talk old money, you, you talk your Ivy League colleges that teach you about Forex, you know, teach you about stock, teach you about day trading, you know, teach you about the GDP, the CPI. They teach you all of that. Now you're talking about a new asset, a new digital class that's, that's, that the average person gets into and can make a lot of money on. And, and, and you're, you're, you're self-taught or you, you learn by different, by communication, telegram, by YouTube, uh, join these academies. And you get into these, these, these spaces and you can make your money kind of quick. I mean, I, I do stocks myself. So I've never had a stock where I can gain 12% within six months, let alone a year. You get, in, and not all crypto is going to make you rich, but if you understand utility of that crypto, where it's going, who's backing it up, read the white paper, do your homework on that, that asset, you can make that 12% in fairly three days if it goes up. Can you, you lose it that fast at the same time? You can. Uh, I think the only difference between stocks and crypto is, the volatility and how fast you can make and lose your money. And, you know, that separate those things right there. But, you know, is it, is it worth it? I think it's worth it. You know, I, I think it is well worth it. And when, it, when the technology itself grows, you know, when, when companies are using that blockchain technology to, to put their information in there so it'd be so it's stored, it grows. When, when companies are using NFTs for things to get a digital number to it, it grows. You know, I just think the whole space grows. You know, I don't think it's it's not going to slow down no time soon. So which one of you guys say you're not into it? Eh. I, mean, I, I seem interested. Yeah, I mean, it's something you got to really get into. It's something that if you sat down and understood it, you'd be like, wow. I mean... I think about 70% of individuals got into the crypto space in 2021. Why? I don't know. But a lot of people got into it in 2021 because if you look at January 2021, the mark, crypto market was very low and, and it shot up. It lowed down in June and it shot up again. So last year, a lot of people made money. Uh, and, you gotta, and you understand, a lot of governments was not involved at the time. There was, there was not too many regulations regulating it at the time. So if you got in in January 2021, you, you made pretty good profit. You know, this year, the first two months, uh, crypto assets kind of went down. And you got to look at what's going on. We're looking at a global inflation. We're looking at uh, war. We're looking at a lot of things that affected the markets this year. But to me, March... March, April, I, I can see them going back up. You know, I, I can really see it, it gain, gain momentum again. I can really see it happening. Okay. Yeah, I agree. And uh, what what do you think the impact that your children's book might have on young kids that may not know what crypto is? Uh, I think it should be a good impact. Um uh, when, you, when you're dealing with kids, you know, you got to keep them intrigued. You got to keep their their attention on it. And it's got to be something they want to read. You know, um, you know, I have four kids and I have grandkids. And to me, when you when you have something that that fascinate kids, you know, it gives it gets their attention going. And, you know, I think I wrote my book to kind of tell a story in a fun way, you know, you got, you know, you see uh, little Johnny riding the bike. Me and my dad got uh, crypto. 
Brandy and Jacobs wondering uh, what's crypto, you know, and it kind of leads on leads down the trail of somebody, another kid in the park saying, Hey, I know what crypto is. You know, you kind of make it secretive, you know, and then you go to our scientists and he kind of takes them down into the crypto crypto world and explains it to them, dropping nuggets, you know. It's kind of the adventure itself. You know, that's the first book of many. You know, I wrote my second book already. It's going to be dealing with the metaverse. You know, Brandy and Jacob lost to the metaverse. So, you know, the metaverse is a big thing. This year. So, so I try to make it fun for the kids at the same time. You know, it's a learning tool and it's fun. And the key word is fun. You know, even though learning is a big part, but it's fun. When, when it's fun, they learn. And, you know, when you start talking about the things I'm writing about, our kids do it every day. You know, I mentioned Roblox earlier. I don't know what kid is not playing Roblox. You know, crypto Roblox is, is a form of the metaverse itself. You, you know, you keep on buying these items just to play the game. Yeah, the metaverse is doing the same thing. You know, it's just it's a little more advanced. You know, you just got to look at it like that. So that's that's you know, I think my book is pretty good. I think it's a good learning tool. Yeah, yeah. I, I certainly agree. Yeah, you guys got a cop a copy. You know, I it's selling on Amazon right now. Brandy and Jacob Crypto Adventure on Amazon. You know, I, I've I've been getting pretty good feedback right now. You know, I get a couple of adults, you know, telling me, Hey, I got your book. You got it for my kids. I read it too. I know what crypto is now. You know, it was kind of a joke we laughed about. It's kind oh, of amazing. Great. Yeah, it's great. You know, you, when your nine-year-old is telling you what crypto is, you know, dad sticks and grabs a book and go read it himself. Say, hey, I got this. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of uh, yeah. funny. Absolutely. So what's your biggest regret in life? Wow. <laughs> that was, that's a sideliner here. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a sideliner. Well, you, you would, I don't know. You know, I, I, I thank God. I've, I've been truly blessed. You know, I, I was born in Southern South Carolina. My family uh, moved to New York wait minute, City. Wait, a Lawrence, can, wait, where did, were you born in South Carolina? Uh, Sumter. You guys, I was well, you born know in Columbia. Oh, you're right down the road. Hell, 30 minutes. <laughs> well, I live in Clinton. Well, I, well, I don't live in Columbia anymore. Uh-huh. I'm still, in, right I'm still the in the state. But Okay. So, you know, you, know, you go down, you know, uh, I moved to New York when I was a kid. But every summer, you know, we go back home. You know, that was a learning thing, going back home and seeing the family and everything else. And after I left New York, I, you know, I moved around California, Vegas. Uh, I joined the military from California. And so I joined the military, went to Europe, stayed in Europe quite a few years. I got to visit UK, England, uh, you name it. I, I did a lot of traveling when I was over there. I was stationed in Germany. I got out. I joined law enforcement, did a lot of traveling in law enforcement. You know, I was in a state agency. And you know, my own, my, I, I have no regrets. I think my life was happened the way the Lord wanted it to happen. You know, I think we have our struggles every day. I think I was truly blessed to be able to live my life. You know, every, every person should be able to say that. We're going to have downfall. We're going to have hardship. We're going to have setbacks. Everything's not always going to be right. You know, you're going to be broke. <laughs> I mean, something's going to happen. But at the end of the day, you know, there's always going to be someone doing worse than you are. And that's a blessing, I can say. When I say somebody's doing worse than you, I don't mean it like that. But someone always going to have it harder than you. You have it. And you got to understand, you're truly blessed. I got both my legs. I can see, you know, I, I can walk. I'm not, you know, I'm not paralyzed. I'm fairly healthy. So, when you say, what's my regret? I have no regrets in life. You know, I, I thank God for everything he, he's allowed me to do. You know? Fabulous. Yeah. Great. I mean. So, yeah. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep so, question, man. <laughs> yeah. So, where, where, where do you see yourself 20 years from now? <laughs> I hope breathing, but uh, 20 years from now, you know, I don't know. Um, 
you know, I, I'm happily married. My my kids, you know, they all went to college. They're successful. 20 years from now, you know, I, I'm retired. You know, I, I make a pretty good income retired. I've jumped into another phase of my life with, with this crypto, you know, writing books, building academies. 20 years from now, you know, I, 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 I just hope I'm in the same space in my mind right now where everything, you know, is going good. It was good right. and bad days, but would you ever like if you say you write books, would you ever consider like I don't know, you probably write only books about crypto and such. Would you ever write a book about being like a fictional universe or f- adventure books? You know, I've, I've I've pondered on that, you know, and you know it's kind of funny. I pondered on. I, I think about that a lot now. Now that I, I you know I got a lot of time on my hand, a lot of things come to mind. That that would be something to do right there. You know, what, I don't know how. How would you frame that the way you said that? I just think like adventure books, like for example, like not on the same level as the Star Wars expanded universe, but like something like somewhere that kids or adults can enjoy, like the Maximum Ride series by um, James Patterson. Okay, I, I can see that. I can see that. I think my next my my next book I'm going to put out, uh, Lost in the Crypto, uh, Lost in the Metaverse. It's kind of an adventure. It's more of an adventure because there's a lot of, you know, you remember, I don't know if you guys remember Tron. Remember Tron? Yeah. When the guy's locked in the, you know, computer. So the metaverse is nothing but Tron at, in today's date. You know, all the things that we see back in Tron, you know, with the cycles, you know, the overseer and all of that, that's the metaverse these days. You know, you have different metaverse, you know, applications coming out, but essentially that's the metaverse. And, and you know, I think my next book talks about that. These guys are, are lost in the metaverse, you know, and they have adventures. It's fictional. You know, they have adventures. They see different things. But I think as they, they have these adventures, they learn something at the same time. Uh, maybe the blockchain is broken down. They're trying to fix a blockchain. You know, I don't want to give too much away, but, you know, it's just stuff like that. You know, you know, I think it's make it fun. You know, I keep them short stories. But, but, you know, one day I might, I might make it a little bigger and get deep into it and wrap them all up in their own big novel. You know, it's not going to be Harry Potter, but, you know, I might, I might try to go there. <laughs> I know, I've never read Harry Potter. But... <laughs> I'm just saying, man. <laughs> Harry Potter, hey, uh, he, he took the world by storm. <laughs> and you got to figure, when, when he started writing his book, how many kids went out and bought magic kits? How many parents bought magic kits? You know, how many parents went out and bought a cape? Bought a, bought a little wand, Harry Potter. No, 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 no. How they got a wand is that they went out to the yard, grabbed a stick. <laughs> yeah, that's for us poor, poor kids, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, though. But, you know, it took you on a whole different adventure. You know, I, I see I see adventure and crypto the same way. You know, how do you, how do you ride a, how do you, how do you look at a blockchain and turn it into a kid's adventure? You know, a lot of people don't know what a blockchain is, but it is very simple, simple, simple. Once you yeah. understand it, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's just getting folks to understand, hey, you know, this stuff is very adventurous and everything else, you know, you know, you see, you talk about life itself. You know, I worked at, I worked at different, you know, I, I, when I retired, I retired as a, a level of captain and, and I used to work in prisons. I worked at fire camps. And, you know, I used to see kids coming at 19 years old for petty crime, uh, got two year sentences. And then, you know, they get in prison, they, they join prison gangs. Before you know it, they, they you know, committed more crimes in prison. Now they got 10 years. You know, it, it's kind of crazy when you talk about life itself and how fast it can change. And then I, and then I look at the department, you know, California Department of Correction itself. If individual was incarcerated, there was always a chance and an opportunity to gain some kind of a tool to utilize on the outside world. You know, when I start talking about my, my past events. Oh, okay. uh, sorry, my cat. Yeah, that's, I that, guess that, yeah, that was very interesting. Uh, yeah. I guess that's all we have for this episode. It was great having you here, Tony O, discussing about crypto, your your crypto academy it was fabulous 
Yeah, well, hey, welcome you guys to follow me on Instagram. Got about 50,000, 55,000 followers on there. It's Black Crypto on Instagram, uh, Facebook. You know, I jumped into the venture of TikToking. <laughs> poor soul. Uh, huh? Your poor it's, soul, because TikTok can be one heck of a place. It, it sure is, man. It sure is. But hey, if you're gonna oh, if yeah. you're gonna jump, jump big. If you're gonna fly, fly high. If you're gonna run, run fast. You know, that's 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 what oh, I yeah. think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on though. Anytime. Done, and until and until next time, stay tuned for more. <laughs>